If you can add a human element to your marketing, whether it is inbound or outbound, you're going to have a better chance of having that captive moment with a homeowner. And so that's a lot of what we go through when we work with people. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Eat, Sleep, and Invest. I'm your host, Brian Driscoll, and I'm here with Michael Bartolome. What's going on, Michael? Hey, Brian. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for coming on. So, so everyone, everyone listen, and we're going to be talking about SMS. Michael's with Launch Control, so they do a lot in this space. I know a lot of investors I talk to have a really low cost per deal through SMS, so it's going to be exciting getting to see how, like a little bit behind the scenes and some tips for Michael. So, Michael, first, why don't you give us a... A little bit of background, like how did you even, how did you get into this space? Yeah, sure. Happy, happy to give a little background. So I'm the, I'm the chief uh, commercial officer at Launch Control. So I work with all of our teams. I work with our customer success team, our sales team, our marketing team. And I've been with Launch since the very beginning when there was, you know, maybe 40, 50 investors using the platform. As you all know, significantly larger than that now. So yeah, I've seen the whole journey of us being able to really find a great combination of SMS engagement strategies and real estate investment best practices and just seen that whole network and ecosystem really grow. Nice. So how'd you get into this space? Like, where'd you come from? Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure some of you, you know, our, our CEO, he was involved in the real estate investment space pretty heavily. He recruited me largely for sales and marketing expertise. And you know, it's a, it's kind of a funny backstory. Like right in the beginning, he, he basically threw me in the deep end, but in a positive way. And he said, look, if you want to get to know this business, you need to know the investors. And so I just started calling up our subscribers and talking to them about content strategy, talking to them about their business. People were really open to just having chats with me. And so my my real entry point was just problem solving for investors and saying like, look, you guys, like I get it from a sales and marketing perspective, teach me from an investment perspective. And, you know, I learned from literally thousands of investors across the country. That's pretty interesting. You did that too, because a lot of people in the digital space in the marketing in general space don't really understand investors. They understand yeah. real estate. So that's a that's a big thing. If you, you were getting the learning, like what do real estate investors want? They don't want people to want to sell their house. They want people to want to sell fast and different things like that, which is totally different. Wholesaling in particular is a really interesting niche. And it's a cool mix, right? Because yes, investors want to get deals done quickly because there is a certain volume aspect to it. But there's also a real human element to how you, how you get these deals done. If you have the ability to make a connection with the homeowner and to, to build trust and, and allow them get their, get their captive attention so that you can really present solutions, then by presenting those solutions, you're able to turn those deals around quicker, right? Because you have to right. you get, get the motivation, get the timeline, tell, walk them through their alternatives. And if you can, if you can hold their attention and do that, you can turn over deals faster. So if you can add a human element to your marketing, whether it is inbound or outbound, you're going to have a better chance of having that captive moment with a homeowner. And so that's a lot of what we go through when we work with people is, you know, I, I say this every time I do a media appearance and I'm, and I'm hoping that it really sticks. But the phrase that I hate most in this industry is text blasting. Don't blast text. Talk to homeowners. What a lot of people do with digital engagement um, and marketing in, in general is they, they think of it just as outreach. But it's not. What's most important is that you're able to layer in a human element to that. Because what you want is the captive attention of the homeowner. From their perspective, purchase a home. Right? You, you're you going to turn that property over pretty quickly. But this is something that they need to feel safe. They need to feel taken care of. They need to feel like this deal is something that makes sense for them. And you're not going to do that with just a cold email, phone call, direct mail piece, SMS. It doesn't matter the medium. If you can't add a human element to it and you can't get that moment of captive attention with them, you're not going to be able to close as many deals. So what we try to do, one of the things we try to do is help coach people, not just on the SMS side, but in their marketing efforts in general, on ways to add in that kind of human element to it, uh, that focused attention that will help generate that one-on-one -on -one interaction that you're going to always need 
in order to close the volume of deals that you want for you or your team. Now, let me ask you this. So I own, I own some properties and I get spammed all the time. So in text, how do you build a human element? Because whoever's texting me, I don't know what they're doing, but it's ridiculous. And then it's not they're not relating to people on a human element, right? So right. what kind of tips and what do you recommend for people that do want to do SMS successfully? How do you build that human element and like connection there? Okay, well, think of anything that you want to do. And, and this, it, this extends beyond SMS. Right. And you can add any, any good sales rep, any good marketer will tell you this, that you, it takes multiple touch points to close a deal. Right. Like I think the famous adage is for every, you know, Coca Cola needs eight kind of visual touch points with every customer before they actually purchase the product. Right. So it, the same is true in any marketing channel that you use. It's going to take multiple touch points. So if you're thinking about SMS, right. So you, your, your first question is, you know, how do I get this person to engage? Because what I'm looking for isn't a text message that works. There is no magic text message. The question is, how do I get them to get into a, into the inbox of launch control where I can actually engage with them, where I can make the, the pivot point decision to either continue sending them a text message or to pick up the phone and call them to try to get an in-person meet or an on-site meeting set if it advances to that point post-discovery uh, information. So how do I get to that level of engagement where I can start to build touch points? So if everyone said, looks at it from a volume play and goes, you know what, I'm gonna send a thousand people some variation of, hey, Brian, you own 57 Green Street, is that correct? Would you be up for an offer? If they get that, if they're on a pre-foreclosure list and they get nine variations of that from nine different numbers and nine different investors, throughout the day, it's frustrating white noise. So how can you take the things that seem like these approaches that everyone else has said, oh, this works, this works, don't do that. If it's working as a, as a blanket, oh, this is, this is the, if anybody tells you like, this is the bullet point, like, or the, the bulletproof message you need to send, then other people are sending it and it's probably gonna be white noise, right? So what can you do in, in your phrasing that's going to sound a little bit different. And what we try to do with the content that we provide is to appeal to actual emotional motivation that the homeowners have. So if you're somebody who's in pre foreclosure, for instance, imagine what that feels like, right? That's scary. The bank's going to come take your house. You have limited time and you feel like you have limited options. So are you going to hard press that person or are you going to be helpful and show them that you can give them alternatives that they didn't think that they had? If you know that you're dealing with multi, uh, somebody who owns multiple properties, then you know that they just want to cut the and get to the point, right? Because they're, they're educated in this. They know exactly who you are. They know what you want and they want to get to the point. So who are you talking to? There is no blanket answer for everyone. It's a question of who are you talking to and what is their motivation? If you pull a list of high equity homeowners over 55, are they going to be very trustful of people sending text messages? No, you're going to have to build trust. Now, if you can get them to engage on the first one, then you can, you can run them through a lead conversion process. Now, that lead conversion process is everyone has their own approach to this, but the lead conversion process should be based around, you know, when do you take this from a, a text to a call? And if you lose them, what we refer to as ghosting, Right? If you lose them, then we have the drip automation feature that allows you in a, in a spaced out and very intentional way, continue to interact with them and present new solutions, new opportunities, new ways of engaging throughout that sequence of, of text engagement messages oh, yeah. until they are ready to uh, engage with you. Okay. Now that makes sense. And, and you're right too, because I like even if someone were to text me versus my wife, you got to have a whole different approach. Like you're right. You have to know the audience you're talking to pre foreclosure versus an investor that owns 20 properties. It's going to be totally different. So it, it's interesting. Cause I never thought about that before. I think about it on the digital side, our audience, but I never thought about it on SMS. It's a barrier that we're, we work really hard to get past because a few years ago, you know, what everybody did is they took the most impersonal route you possibly could, which is why I hate that phrase text blasting. And because all they were looking to do was send a very high volume of messages and then take the and pick up desperation. 
if somebody said, yeah, actually, I really need a solution and I need a solution fast. Right. And so you'd get these, these ridiculous stats, like you need to send out 5,000 text messages to get one deal. If you need to send 5,000 text messages to do one deal, you don't have a good lead conversion system. Right. That means that what you did is you sent out thousands of messages and you waited for desperation to say, hey, I'm desperate. You didn't have a system to convert those leads. If you have a system to convert those leads and you're speaking to human beings and not just blasting out numbers, you're going to get better results. And the thing that, that is crazy to me about that is data is hard to come by and it's not cheap and neither is skip tracing. So why you would spend a big portion of your marketing budget to blast numbers doesn't make sense to me. We try to take a hyper-targeted approach to this so that if you're sending out, you know, let's say a thousand contact records you're hitting over the course of a week or two weeks even, challenge yourselves. How many of those can you close? Because if you if you're if you're just getting, say, like a 16% response rate on the first initial set of messages going out. And then 30 days later, you send some retargeting messages and you get a collective total of a 20% response rate, right? That means you've got 200 active conversations that got generated, right? 200 homeowners that raised their hand and, and showed a willingness to interact via SMS. Now, some of those you're going to have to cycle out, right? Like some of those are, are going to, are going to be the leave me alone, you know, basically some version of please DNC me, which we'll do. But there's going to be a portion of those that are going to be legitimate leads. And they're not all going to be desperation, raise their hand moments. Many of them are going to be leads that are going to require a couple of touch points. They're going to require a little bit of investor finesse. But if you, instead of looking for the few amongst the thousands, and instead look for, you know, the, what you can get out of every lead that raises its hands while you have that captive attention, you're going to close a lot more and you're going to have a lot more opportunities. Right. You help people with that side of it also, right? Because I think a lot of people think, oh, yeah, we go to launch control and we just send text messages. But you guys offer more of a comprehensive service, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got, right, hands down, the best customer success team in the industry, maybe in multiple industries. And, and they're really, really well versed in real estate investment. You know, like what we were talking about at the top of the call, like I had that educational moment where I went through and I talked to hundreds, if not, if not a thousand plus investors to get to know the business. They talk to 50 plus investors every single day and they solve different challenges for those investors every single day. And, you know, they come to me with, with like, sales and marketing ideas of where they're noticing trends in real estate in you know and near michigan and and minnesota and i'm like you guys know this but it's because they talk to people every single day and they know what's going on in the industry so what we really try to do is the phrase that i always use with my teams is everything is a problem solution dynamic so where are investors having problems in their business and how can we help them solve those problems? So we will go in, we have our own discovery calls anytime someone works with our CS team and we're asking these questions about their business. You know, where's your business now? Where do you want to get your business to? Where are you getting your data from? What other marketing channels are you using? How can we capitalize on those other marketing channels by using SMS to help optimize the money that you're already spending outside of launch, right? Like, so we're, we're asking these very pointed questions so that we can come up with solutions. And it's truly segmented. It's meant for a very team mentality. So like, if you come in and you, as a very sophisticated investor, talk to my team, they're going to take you down a very different talk track than if you have a VA working for you and you want them to kind of run, run the system while you're out being an investor, we're going to start them at a ground zero education and work them up from there. So we identify based on not only SMS experience, but also position within the company. So we're cognizant of your time and where you truly want your efforts to be. Okay. And that, that makes sense. And what I'm hearing here too is if you're an investor, you don't have to learn the marketing game. Like you, you work with people like you on the SMS and you guys can help with the systems not just sending the initial text, but nurturing, different messaging, things like that, right? Yeah. I mean, we provide content 
for all new users coming in. You don't have to create content. You come in, we give you the content. And so you, you have the ability to test out the system and send messages right away. But the thing that we really, really push for is for people to take advantage of the educational opportunities. Because the thing is, when someone comes into investing, they don't, they almost never come from a heavy sales and marketing background. They come in from whatever their day job was before. And they're using their, they're using real estate investment as a way to build passive income, usually so they can let go of that nine to five and be more in control of their own future. Right. And they do that obviously by talking to coaches, by networking with other people uh, that are in the investment game, you know, YouTube educating, but they're educating themselves on real estate investment, not sales and marketing. Right. So, so what happens is they, they come into using, you know, doesn't have to be SMS, any of the available marketing channels and they, they, they come into it without the same push for education that they're giving themselves on the real estate investment side. And they just kind of wing it. And when you wing it, it doesn't work, right? They, there is an art to all of those elements. And, and there's an art to finding the interconnectedness between those marketing channels. So what they find is as their business grows, their, their ability to, to really keep up as high level marketers and, and, and elite conversion sales reps doesn't keep pace, right? So what we want to be able to do is help set the tone as early as we can. Most of the people that we are about 60% of our user base is sophisticated investors, right? They understand investment really, really well. So when we work with them, our idea is look, you're not going to be the subject matter expert here. Someone on your team is. So let us work with them. And we'll help, we'll help on that sales and marketing side. Now, I'm not saying that, that outside education isn't important. Outside education is always extremely important, but we want to help set the tone for having that subject matter expert on your team that's able to think not just this person does SMS, this person does cold calling, this person set our PPC ads, but what's the whole ecosystem? How does that, that lead flow outbound and inbound? How does it all come together? And who has the expertise to understand again the interconnectedness of it, right? So we're not going to we're not going to we're not going to educate your entire team to be at that level of subject matter expert as subject matter experts, but we are going to set the tone and kind of give you some of those key points of what you might need to look for, so that you you are able to build that within your team. That way, no matter how high the real estate investment team goes, there's a clear delineation between who is hyper-focused on real estate investment and building the business from a profitability standpoint, and who is hyper-focused on that more targeted role of lead generation, lead conversion, getting people booked onto calls so that the people that converse with the homeowners are able to focus on that and not having to play subject matter expert in marketing if that's not really what they're good at. Yeah, and you know what? That even makes me think too, like with the whole ecosystem, so we do a lot of online lead gen, right? And mm -hmm. we use multiple lead forms, like multiple step forms. And then uh, it just made me think, a lot of people don't fill out the whole form, but you have their phone number. You could pull them over to you guys and set up a drip message. Hey, you filled out some of the form, but you didn't complete it or whatever, and try to re-engage those people just crossing different channels. Exactly right. So, you know, if, if somebody is, the, and, and that's that, that cross communication is what I really want people thinking about. Because let's say, let's say we just focus on re-engaging with your inbound marketing. Okay. So let's say you're doing PPC, you've got a TV ad up and you put out some direct mailers. Now, most people will think of those as individual channels and they will try to gauge the ROI of those individual channels. Like what was my cost for direct mail pieces? What did I get out of it? What was my cost for PPC? What did I get out of it? Uh, what was my cost for TV? What did I get out of it? I try to get people to think about that as, again, one ecosystem of leads. And how can I get the most possible money out of that entire ecosystem of leads? So if you've got leads coming in through TV, PPC, direct mail, you're not closing on one call, at least not every time, right? It takes multiple touch points. And there's a high, not a high percentage chance, but there is a, there's a certainly a pattern of what I called ghosting, people dropping off, right? And, and the first thing that you did 
was you picked up the phone and you called them, right? But now they're not answering that call. So how are you going to re-engage, right? You have to hit them up through a different marketing medium. So if you can put those leads, which are, which are warm leads, right? They know who you are. You don't have to play the anonym, anonymity game. You can put them back into launch control and you can say, you know, hey, it's Brian over at Motivated Leads. We were just talking on the phone a couple of days ago. I uh, thought this might be easier. Like, we'll keep it conversational, keep it light. But if you can get them, you know, you can get them to re-engage there. You know, then you again, you open up all the tools at launch. You have the you have the drip automations that you can put them on. You can, in, in most cases, honestly, like if text worked and you got them to re-engage, it's probably going to be an almost immediate push to call at that point because you've got the captive attention again, right? And, right. and like you said, with the, with a with a wholesale deal. It is typically a it's short. It's a short cycle, typically, right? Like this is one of the things that drives me a little bit crazy is when somebody say, for instance, says, "I'm not interested in selling right now," and then in the text, people just go, "Okay," or they put them on a long term drip automation. If you had them on the phone, there's no way you wouldn't ask the question why. All right, right. they're sitting on a distressed home. There's no way you wouldn't ask them why. Right. And, and so it, it, you get these opportunities through retargeting. If even if somebody's like, you know, the timing's not right, I don't think it, maybe the timing is right. You know, so as long as you're ba basically able to go, come here. Oh, now I have your captive attention again. Then, you know, you can, you can take whatever, whatever you guys do as a team in terms of lead conversion. Now you have that captive attention and you're able to jump back into your own processes again, again, ups your chances. So if you start thinking about your entire ecosystem and think about like, well, how can I, how can I continue to cross target? You can take your inbound leads and, and you can retarget them through SMS. Absolutely. Right. But even within your outbound marketing, right? If you're, if you're doing cold calling and it's not working, you've got that set of leads. Are you also running them through an SMS campaign? Because it's a waste of data if you're not. Right. If you're using SMS and look, it's, you're not going to get a hundred percent engagement rate, right? Like we'd be billionaires if you did, like it's you, you're going to have some leads that chose not to interact via text. Doesn't mean another medium isn't going to get to them. You can gather captive attention from different people in different ways. So the question is, did I do absolutely everything in a non-obtrusive, non you know hitting them over the head with with messaging kind of way again a, a human focused way did i do enough to make sure that all of those leads that are not leads all of those data points that i paid for all of those contact records that i paid for that i do absolutely everything i could through each of my marketing channels and the cross functionality between the marketing channels to absolutely ensure that that was either a potential deal or not a potential deal, right? Um, That's a good point. Okay, so let me answer this. So everyone in the SMS space right now, like I talked to a lot of investors and a lot of investors are scared. They're like, oh, you know what? I don't want to do SMS because of compliance, things like that. Like, what do yeah. you see on that side, how people can do SMS messaging and not be getting those litigators and fines coming in the mail? Okay. Well, look, this is there. This is the biggest misconception in uh, SMS marketing is this word compliance. People equate compliance with legality. And look, I'm not a lawyer. If you really and I can't give legal advice, if you really want legal advice on TCPA regulations, happy to give you guys references. But the simple the simple breakdown of it is this. There, is, there are federal and state level regulations around telecommunications, right? And all of those are really geared towards auto dialers and, and in particular, like phone auto dialers, right? So launch control as a, as an application is not an auto dialer. If anybody that's used it knows you need to hit send, right? Like you, you, you have to take an actual manual action and you're, you're sending out very personalized messages. Uh, there's also within that space of the TCPA guidelines, which is that is the federal level regulatory guidelines. If you're not selling a product or service, it's an allowable thing, right? If you're not hitting them over the head with, with product and service sales, which wholesaling is not. You're simply, you're simply discussing 
their intentions for their home. They can they can take a solution or not. You're not earning a commission off of it, at least not something that they they're paying you directly. And so it's it's within those regulations. Now we we keep a very close eye on what the states are doing individually in terms of of their regulatory bodies and any changes that they make. And we will alert anybody in uh, there. There's with the exception of maybe the, the state of Utah where you need to be a little bit more careful about double checking against the do not call registry. It's the federal regulations pretty much apply across all states. Now, here's where the confusion comes in is CTIA guidelines. These are suggested best practices from the big carriers. They have no legal relevance whatsoever. You, you cannot get sued for not following CTIA guidelines. They You're might talking from like Verizon, AT&T, the, exactly. The exactly. exactly. They might say, we don't like what you're doing. You can't text with us anymore. But there's there are no legal implications to this whatsoever. It's big business. It's business to business best practices is all it is. So when you like the 10 DLC regulations and and registering your account when you use launch control or anything uh, in any other platform or you're giving your EIN number to register with them. This is them following their own CTIA guidelines, which again are business to business best practices for SMS engagement. And what they're trying to do is because it's it's a very profitable opportunity for them if they can get rid of the junk, right? So if like auto warranty renewals that are sending out 500,000 plus auto dial texts, if they can get those out of the system, they can get, they, they can get big spam out of the system, then they can keep it onto because what 10 DLC stands for, it sounds all scary, right? What, what it sounds for, stands for is 10 digit long code which means area code plus seven numerals. In other words, every number in existence. It's just a scary way of explaining an actual phone number, not a 1-800 number or a short code number. It's, it, they, they made it sound scary on purpose. It just means that you're texting from a regular phone number to a regular phone number. That's all that it means. And so when you submit that EIN number and you register with the, it's called the campaign registry, which is essentially just a, a registration organization for the carriers so that you register once and you have the ability to text with all of the major carriers. What they're doing is they're essentially just verifying your business. So when, when you're, you're showing that your website has opt in and it's, and you know, it's got that little mark that says, yes, I agree to accept SMS messages. It's, it's set up really for your inbound marketing but it is a true and an accurate aspect of your business, right? So you're right. showing that. And they're, they're looking at that and they're going, yeah, this is a small business. It's a small business reaching out to a small audience, vetted, verified they're in. Because if you don't get vetted, if you don't get verified, then you get marked as likely spam or spam, which no one does, right? We've, we've never had a single problem with that. The only problem we've ever had with registration is if somebody doesn't have that opt-in aspect on their website, we have to go back to them because we manually vet everything. So you're not getting caught up in the in the bureaucracy of it. And we push it back and say, guys, you got to have this on your website. They do the quick fix and then we're able to, you know, we're, we're they're able to get those inbound leads coming in and we're able to get them registered as a small business. Right. Now there is of course monitoring on a business to business level of what the content of the messages are, the, the intent of the messages. And the only time that there are ever any, any issues whatsoever is when people are stupid. And what I mean is if let's say somebody has a list of a thousand names and they do some sort of trickery to get the, to be able to text the same people in too short of a space, which we have a bunch of safety checks to make sure that they can't do that. But if look, if they find a workaround and they abuse that list, they'll get dinged. And when they get dinged, what I mean is not a financial tie-in because, again, it is not connected to the legality of the TCPA guidelines. That is a very different thing. This is just business to business where they go, hey, don't do that. And you have to DNC that number. We have to slap them on the wrist, re-educate them. But it's not a question of any legal kind of conversation. It's business to business best practices. To my knowledge, no one has ever gone through any kind of TCPA federal level 
issues texting through launch control, not once. And I've been here for four years. It, it doesn't happen because if you, if you do things the way that we do in a very targeted fashion, you're respectful of the homeowner. We have auto DNCs in the system. So if somebody clearly doesn't want to be contacted, you don't even have a choice. The system will, will DNC them. But if you're cognizant of the people that, that just really aren't receptive and it doesn't seem like text is the way to get to them, you have the option to DNC them. So if you are respectful of the recipient and you are targeted in your approach, it is a safe and acknowledged, in this case, business to consumer from your, from your perspective. But from the perspective of the carriers, it is a, a verified and accepted business to business interaction for, for you guys, right? It's a partnership between you and the carriers as an individual. It's not about launch. It's about your behavior within that ecosystem and how, and how you interact with your recipients. So if you, you get yourself verified, you send, you send messages in a targeted fashion, you respect the homeowner on the other end, and you don't try to do anything abusive in terms of like, well, yeah, they didn't answer a text. So now I'm going to call them 12 times in a row. Could you potentially get yourself in trouble there? Sure. Was it the platform that did it? No, it wasn't. Right. So if you, if you follow very simple protocol, you handle marketing in this fashion in a, in a strategic way, you're not going to have any issues. Yeah, that makes sense. I know that's a, that's a hot topic with everybody. So yeah, thanks for clearing that up. Sure. Um, last question, we're almost out of time. Do you guys help provide lists or do you do people bring their own data with them? Most people are bringing their own data with them. This is you know something that I like to tell people in general is that you know, launch control, if you really think about it, Launch Control is the largest real estate invest, met, investor network in the country. It's 4,000 real estate investors using the system every day. So for something like data, right? there are multiple routes that you can go to, um, you know, one, network with other people through our social media, our Facebook page, find out where they're getting their data, ask them for data hacks. Right? You can do that. You can go to our CS team and ask them if they have any resources for data. Depending on what level you are in your business, they will give you different recommendations of where you can go for data. And if it's a really high end thing where, where you want us to actually, you know, curate and deliver data for you and your company, then we can have that discussion and we can do that because we, we have the resources within our, our network. And, and because we are so heavily invested in real estate investment through the, the contacts that we have, to be able to get you any any level of data that you need. It's really a choose your own adventure thing within that giant network of real estate investors across the country. Right? Do you wanna do you wanna figure out your own solutions by just talking to other investors and using that again, captive attention, right? That captive attention of other investors, or do you wanna lean on us and and the the connection, direct connections that we can make? Either way, as long as you're working with us directly and not just kind of going into the system cold, we can absolutely help provide that. Perfect. Now, if, if people want to reach out and uh, connect with you guys, see if there's a fit in working with you, what's the best way to connect? The best way is just to go straight through the, the website, launchcontrol.us. You can connect with our, with our sales team first. The approach that we always take, again, like I said, everything is a problem solution dynamic for us, right? So the sales team is going to ask you guys really pointed questions about like where you are in your business and what you're looking to achieve. And, and they're going to let our CS team know, uh, what to expect when you come in. So as soon as you get signed up, you're going to get, you're going to get a bunch of, of outreach from our, our customer success team to, to get on board with them and talk to them and, you know, the best piece of advice that I can give is to take advantage of that and to work with us directly. Come in with questions and, and we'll, we'll set you up with, you know, whatever answers that we can provide. And if, and if there's something that, you know, is outside of the box for us, which is rare, we'll go get it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll have this in the show notes too. Yeah, check them out, launchcontrol.us. Hey, Michael, one last question. What's your top book you recommend? <sighs> um, let me see. What would I recommend? Uh, you know, I'll say he, he recently passed away and he's one of the all time great American writers, Cormac McCarthy. Give any of his books a read. If you have a, if you have a strong stomach, Blood Meridian. And, uh, if you, if you want to take it slightly easier, but, you know, still expect it to be a little bit dark, all the pretty horses. All right. Excellent. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. 
Yeah, absolutely. It was a pleasure being on. I really appreciate you having me. It was great chatting. Yeah, and hey, everyone, thanks for listening. Until next time, get out there, crush it, close some deals. We'll see you guys.